Hello and welcome to the panel Approaches to Short Film Narratives uh, at the 6th Torino Short Film Market. My name is Doris Bauer and I'm co-director of the International Short Film Festival Vienna Shorts in Austria. Thank you, Enrico, for inviting me to moderate this panel here today. We are here in Torino live at the Torino Short Film Market, but the event is also streamed online at the same time. So you, the audience here on site and online, will be able to ask questions toward the end of the panel. But let me first introduce our panelists here today. Um, Maike Mia Höhne. She worked as a curator, author, photographer, pr producer and director. From 2007 to 2019, she was head of Berlinale Shorts of the Berlin International Film Festival. Maike is a professor for film at the University of Applied Sciences Europe in Hamburg. But she also teaches film theory. Um, uh, and yeah. sometimes I sleep. <laughs> Sometimes. Maybe not. <laughs> According to your bio, it seems like you're not sleeping anymore. <laughs> I do, I do, and I like it. Uh, she's now artistic director of the Hamburg Short Film Festival. And she's also the author of a text that was crucial for the panel today. We will talk about it a bit later. Um, Ronny, Ronny Troca is a director. He studied film at the Universidad del Cine in Buenos Aires, Argentina, and later at Le Frenoir, the National Studio of Contemporary Arts in Lille, France. His two famous short films are Gli Immacolati, The Immaculates from 2013, uh, Estate, Summer from 2016, and um, yeah, he already made some uh, two feature films, uh, The Eremits, 2016, and Human Factors. It premiered this year in Sundance. Yeah. Um, and Dubravka Turic is also a director. Uh, she graduated in film editing from the Academy of Dramatic Art in Zagreb, Croatia. She has edited more than 30 fiction, animated and experimental films and worked as an assistant director and screenwriter of, on many projects. She created three successful short films so far, um, Bella Donna 2015, Cherries 2017 and Tina 2019. All her films were very successful. It's screened on several festivals. Um, yeah, I mentioned already the starting point uh, for this discussion or talk today. It was the text by Maike Mia Höhne from 2013. Uh, the text is called The Narrative Approach Approaches and was published in a magazine on curating. So if you don't know the text, please read it. Um, we want to talk today about uh, the different approaches you can have to narration and filmmaking in general and some practices you use or you don't use on filmmaking. So, Maike, you m might want to start. We start with your text, so we start with you. <laughs> uh, your text is a few years old now. Um, you, you still agree with the text, in, I mean, in general, and uh, what would you update now if you could rewrite the text? Oh, no rewrites. Um Actually, I was asked, um, if you don't know this magazine, it's really an interesting online publication called On Curating, and it's ongoing, and all, it's an archive, an open archive, and it's really about different approaches, it's on everything related to curating, no? So they asked me to, what kind of films, in this time I was working for Berlinale, do I select, what is my view, my gaze, my profile kind of, no, not my profile, but the profile of the section somehow. So basically what I was thinking by the time, and I still do, is, uh, and, and we can come up with some big names, sometimes it helps, no, this Roland Barthes, who wrote about photography, and when he wrote about photography, he thought about the so-called studium and the so-called punctum. And the punctum is what what touches you, what grabs you. If you look at something, he referred, of course, to photography, but you can relate to films as well. And it's something that is very personal because it's your punctum and yours and mine. And it's not so much related to what you see, but what is connected to what you see or what is unpredictable or the so-called uh, incidents. No? And this is something that stops you in viewing and makes you yeah, makes you stop in what you're doing. And that is something I, I think is really mm, so much related, especially to short form, and makes me aware of what I see, and, and I see this so-called handwriting of someone, and so on and so on, all this goes together, and that was basically what I still think today. 
So the punctum is very important. <laughs> um, Dubrovka, may I want to start with you. Um, what is your approach to filmmaking? What do you think is this punctum is important for you as well? Uh, well, I would go along with your story because that's exactly something that happens to me and uh, all of my motives to do uh, were uh, just that little spot which is always uh, very connected to emotions, some deep emotions. It can start in one of my films. It was just a very short experience that I have that maybe lasted for three seconds. But it was so deep that I carried uh, a long time in my mind and I just knew I had to do something with it. But it's always based on some strong emotions. In uh, one of my shorts, it was a picture of... Um, I was uh, riding after a big fire in the forest, uh, just maybe two days uh, after it. And that scene uh, that I... the setting that I saw uh, was so... Uh, extraordinary but again it was not just a visual thing it's something that touched me deep uh, and I had so much I felt so much emotions in from this picture that I knew and that was the point where I started to build the film around it and in the film it's just one shot at the end so apparently it doesn't have to do you know it was just the starting point and then in one of my shorts I started from a poem which was very short but again, the same thing. It was just something that touched me deep and I had to do something. So I guess it's my kind of way what I do. So this means emotion is very important Absolutely. for you and your yes. films and Absolutely. a starting point? In, in my case. Uh, Rani, you wanna start as well. What's your starting point? <laughs> uh, my starting point it depends on the project, but of course it's the, the punctum. It's also important for the author, not only for the viewer because uh, we, we observe or see a lot of things during our life, but uh, the moment when you choose to make a project or a film or a, a short, long or whatever out of it, it's, it's really like, a, it's a magical moment, no? You can't really describe it. It's when it, it's, it's touching, it's emotion, it's, it's somehow emotional. It can be a, a photo, it can be, a, for me, it's often places also, when, you, when I see places and I feel somehow, uh, that there is something and I can even describe it. And then first of all, I try to, yeah, to, to understand what, what, what's, what's the thing that touches me so, and then to find a form to translate it to film, uh, in my case, if it's short film or it's feature film, uh, there's, no, there's no difference on, on, on this, I think. And yeah, translate it to film and still keep, still keep this, mysterious element uh, uh, um, which touched you or touched me as an author and that's I think where you where, where you can make a good film or a bad film <laughs> if you know if you don't manage to to bring it to the to the, to the film um, you may miss something but you think this translation is important or you or, or you also start with a picture for example like in your film Estate summer and I mean this picture we see this picture then in the film as well so I mean th there is a different story maybe behind it but you really you use the picture on the film as well so it's not translated anymore no it's not translated I tr but I try to translate what intrigued me in the photography so the starting point was a press photo of the film and something triggered my 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 emotion or my attention on it and I tried somehow to yeah to translate the mystery thinking around around the photo uh, and and in this case it was clear that it must be a short film because I think it's uh, I, I like the, f the photography because it's so photography as an art in general because it's so minimal. No, there is no time, there is no sound, but it's still very narrative. No, and I wanted to keep this minimalism in the short film, of course, too, and trying to translate also the the language of photography in a sense that there is in a part of the film there is no time. So, in, uh, but there is still narration. So, uh, yeah, it's something like. It's suggestive. I try to suggest or invite the audience to to go to go uh, deeper uh, 
in, 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 in what we see. And the same is when you watch, uh, when you look at a photo or a painting, you, you're invited to complete it somehow. Uh, and yes, that was the procedure. If I may say, especially a stat is a very good example. I mean, you have this picture, I don't know if everyone knows your film, but it's a picture of a refugee landed on the shore in Spain. And you have all the tourists around enjoying themselves in the sun and him in the middle just having arrived and swimming or we don't know. And it's these uh, contrapositions of two different or more diff very different lives on the one hand. And then you take this picture and you don't not only show what we expect, someone swimming, arriving and being in contra or together or with, in confrontation with the people at the beach, but you take it and you use film to exploit a different way, very different way in using animation to show a different moment of how you also could live this situation. And that's something that is a punctum I mean, this is per se, as it is the photography, and then comes to moving image, and you use animation, so it's stop again, so it's all in one, I guess, no? I always remember this film, for example. I mean, it's so amazing when he runs off in the end. Okay, yes, thank you. You know, it's, it's, another, it's another vision. So perhaps this is also important, no? For the kind of, if we think about this question, then we think about an industry, about who gonna proceed in working in film, uh, will you manage it, kind of, what will you manage, what is it, managing live, film, whatever, and what kind of energy do you need to, to keep this energy or what you find in the beginning to make it, no? to make it really possible. Hmm. Dubavka, for you, um, I mean, we talked about punctum and uh, the way of getting your story or a narrative. Uh, what is important for you is, um, you mentioned this kind of experience you had? Are there other media important, like a picture, or photography, or film making other films? What is your starting point and how do you elaborate your on your, your stories and uh, yeah, uh, working yes, with storyboard uh, or script? Mm -hmm. Yes, of course, it's uh, pictures, it's music always, it's uh, other films that, uh, that I find, I think it's a life experience that is behind it and all those uh, what, what comes to it, uh, I think it's in some outer style, is just the tools we, uh, we, we, we use uh, to try to, as Ronnie says, to try to uh, get that, what we feel, out. So it's just the other kinds of tools, like uh, he, he, what you said, he put some pictures and uh, really, really uh, nice. Wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Uh, what he does is really good things with sound and so minimalism. Uh, he, he really made an extraordinary film. I, have, I, I do more narrative things, but uh, I think it's everything, you know, all those kinds of things that uh, happen in your life that you experience go like to some pyramid and then in one point where you are at that moment, you try to do your best and then comes the creative process uh, where you use the tools, and that's where the film comes from. But you, I mean, you mentioned the uh, sound from Ronnie's films. You come, I mean, you worked as a sound engineer before, and you were an editor. Yes. Does this influence uh, your work, you would say, from, from the start? I mean, you, uh, you see the editing that's first? That's yeah, something is wrong with this one. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, I, uh, I was also a sound editor. Uh, I think music and sound is very important for me also because it's not just the visual part, it's also the audio part from the, uh, that we do in films uh, for the audience to take also. Uh, and I was, while I write the scripts or read the scripts, I can see and hear them. So that's what I try to put first on the paper and then later uh, in, in the film. And uh, I always had a very uh, clear idea what I wanted to do with the sound and with the picture. It you, you mean from the beginning? From the beginning, yes. Of course, it, it moves along uh, when you have uh, other authors in the, in the team, but somehow I, I was close to my uh, first idea from the beginning. So you already know the emotional state uh, you want your film to evoke in the audience? 
Yes, because it comes from me. <laughs> I, I, I want to put it out, the things I, uh, I feel. So I try. It's, it's not always working, but I try. Ronnie, what's the importance of uh, emotion in your work? What would of, you say? Of emotion? Yeah. Uh, uh, I think it's, 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 it's important, but uh, uh, it depends on the kind of emotion, no? It's always like... Uh, mm. Do you think of emotions when you when you start working on a film, on a project, a film? If I, if I think of emotions, yes, but I cannot really name it. I think it's something. Uh, uh, it's, it's hard for me to find the words on what kind of emotion I feel. That's what I, I thought before. It's trying to understand always this what moves you on a subject or on a project to to do it. So. Uh, uh, mm, I'm a bit afraid also of too much emotion, so <laughs> uh, because uh, this may be a personal thing. Maybe it's just uh, it's uh, it's uh, I'm afraid to to lose the the the, the audience in something like uh, where emotion takes over the form or over the story. So. Uh, um, but but yes, it's it's it's. Um, for, I think that's the, that's why I'm afraid a bit uh, uh, of the use of music sometimes, or I'm really careful with it, because music can be like uh, um, how do you say it? Uh, can uh, yeah, can be cheesy or can be uh, manipulate our emotions too easily. So for me, it's really hard to, to work with music, and it, it's, it's really the last thing I do when I in, in, in the editing. It's uh, I, I I think a lot of uh, about I think a lot about sound while writing, the, the sound elements as a narrative element, but music I never put music in a scenario on, on my script. I, I'm just not able to it. It's something like I really put it only in the in the last moment if if I feel that I find the right music and there is something interesting coming out. Uh, yeah, so I think I'm a bit afraid of, of, of emotions. <laughs> okay, can I just say something? When I said emotions in my, uh, in my case, I didn't mean like love emotions, like in Titanic or something like that. I meant everything, like fear or something, the coldness or any kind of emotions. Mikey, maybe I ask you now. <laughs> you are the curator, so you are selecting films. Um, what is particularly important for you in the selection process or what, what are you looking for when you watch films? And you mentioned there's kind of Palenale view already, so what is, what is this Palenale view about or what is, this, uh, what is a good short film for you? Well, these are too many questions in one, Sorry. if I may say, <laughs> but you're allowed to, of course. <laughs> Simply, perhaps I come from behind. As when it's all going to, it's, it's going to emotions, isn't it? If we speak about cinema, then we speak about emotions and uh, that you cannot control, of course, because I don't know what they're going to feel, what I do. So this goes back to the curational I engage as well, because if we do a program consisting of five to six films, I don't know what you're going to feel when you have seen the program, but of course, um, especially when it's not about Berlinale, but about programs and programs, and certain topics, ideas, feelings I have, and then I create a program. That's what I really, really love because then I can collect from from what I've seen, from what I know, from what I'm going to ask people, and, and build up a certain narrative that may include three acts if we want so, <laughs> but doesn't need to, of course. But yes, that is what is interesting then, including this certain. Um, starting point as we talked about in the very beginning and then come up and, and, and compare archival movies. I mean, when does an archive work start? Is your film already in the archives? 2000, when was it started? 2014? Belladonna 2015, is this already archive material? Or when does it start? So this kind of combination, of course, is interesting because yes, if you see, and this is the other point with the music, no? for example, the Portuguese people who really do an elaborated work on narration at the moment, I think, in short films, do work a lot with music. 
especially uh, music from the Middle Age or 16th century. So it's interesting to see what they, what kind of combination comes out of it. No? So yes, this uh, gaze is so important, and the I think it is really eating so many films over the years, and then having the chance in a short film festival that there's not only the slot only not only comprises 90 minutes of one feature film, but possibility to have different views. And are you also afraid of manipulation? I mean, Ronnie mentioned this before. And when selecting films for a program, you know that, I mean, you, you can do this or that, you can go this way or the other way. You could manipulate in, in a way with your programming as well. Do you know this fear? Well. <laughs> Yeah, it's a big one. No? Then we, of course, have Walter Benjamin on our mind and his uh, thoughts on the um, reproduction, on the artwork in the, our times, to give my uh, version of the title of his writings. But uh, I don't, I think if you want to manipulate, then you have something bigger in mind where you want to go. If you use, I guess, well, that's the way I understood how you use the term now. If I want people to kiss, I have no problems. I can make a program and then everyone going to kiss perhaps, or most of them. So that's something for change in society. I think it's a good idea. So in this sense, yes, I like to mani manipulate. I think in the text it's called, uh, another thing is called collective thinking that's needed. Uh, so maybe, yeah, we all need like a collective idea of what's, what's going to happen in the film or in a program, a short film program what's, whatsoever. Is this needed for you? Do you think this is important that you can refer to this so that your film is understood or your program is understood? Is a yeah, very interesting question. I think it needs, perhaps it needs a certain content, uh, context sometimes, but it also some films that you really take from the archives, from the very old ones, like 50 years old or 60 years or even older, if, um, they will have something that leads back into time you will not understand, I guess, because it's back in time, but other moments are still understood. I'm just thinking of the so-called uh, dumping kits from Ulla Stöckel and Edgar Reitz, and where there's this woman who can do everything she wants and then she is being killed by Werner Herzog and re-erects and keeps on living and throws money all over the body and whatever. And my son just watched it and understood you can do everything you want with money. Okay, yeah, you can do it. You can, you know. So I think there is something that uh, doesn't need a certain context. But yes, of course, it's nice if people understand somehow where certain topics come from. But this is especially to short film always mostly connected to our society in certain questions, so I guess people understand, no? What do you think? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you think uh, that's one of the strengths of short films as well, that they have a certain time? I mean, time is very important, that's, that's the only thing that is actually important, that they are short. Um, you think that this is important for you as filmmakers, and using this short amount of time? Uh, yes, in short films, absolutely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, it's, uh, it's uh, something that I you want to do, and uh, you have uh, like limitation how you're going to do it. But in, in the other, uh, when you think about it, it's not a limitation on the other side, and uh, I think short films gives you something that a feature that cannot give you, just because you have to do it in s um, uh, quickly in short amount of time, and it's uh, g good to play with it and uh, how to express something that you want in maybe 10 minutes. Uh, his film is uh, seven minutes, right? Yeah. The, the, and yeah. it is so deep and extraordinary, and I, I wouldn't think you would get that uh, energy in if you did it like a feature, you know, it's the way you did this short. It's, you have to see that it's really, really good, please. But it wouldn't have been possible as a feature. I mean, there's frozen people on a beach for uh, 90 yes, minutes, yes. I think. Uh, yes, but that's the tools yeah. uh, that yeah. we are seeing. So yeah. you, you use your best tools to put something in seven minutes mm. and it, it's beautiful, really. Mm. But I think that makes that 
makes, for me at least, short film making, it's much more difficult than a feature because you have to be precise. You, you have to know exactly what you want to want to say or what, where you want to go or where you want the audience to go. Yeah, while in a feature you can introduce a new character if you don't know what to do, how to go on I and mean, you can film whatever. At least you can be, you, no, it's not, it's, I'm, I'm kidding, of course. Um, but I mean, you, um, it's, it's a short film. I, I would love to, I try to do more short films after my last one. And I always had to accept that I, it's not good enough. I don't know exactly where where to go. So, uh, yeah, this 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 reduction is 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 it's it's the power of short film actually, and, and but it's also the, the difficult to 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 make it. I mean, maybe we have to mention that you both uh, made some feature films. Uh, I mean, the last ones were feature films. You finished yours, uh, like. Tomorrow, two day, today, two, day, two days ago, <laughs> two days ago, <laughs> and Ronnie yeah. had two films. Uh, yeah, one premiered this year, I think. The two feature films, I mean. Um, but yeah, I mean, we are talking about short films and the strengths of short films. So, is, isn't one strength also that you can react quickly to current situations, and this is way more difficult with a feature? I mean, with your film, for example, uh, about uh, Estate again, uh, it was it was an older picture, but it was very like reacting on also um, topics that are where in yeah, no. I don't know. It depends a bit uh, on every 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 filmmaker is different. Uh, there's people um, or artists in general. They are really quick and spontaneous. They can act. Uh, they can react to something uh, uh, really quickly, um, and uh, I'm a bit uh, slow. So uh, it's even in a short film. It take for me. It takes a lot of time to to think it, to to write it, to to make it. Of course, financing will probably be uh, faster because mostly there is no money. So. <laughs> Uh, uh, but uh, um, and making the film may be faster, but but I think it depends on on, on the person personal approach or the personal way of of making movies. I don't know if you're quicker than me. No, no, exactly the same. <laughs> no. uh, because uh, um, the approach to filmmaking uh, would would I experience that I really need a, a lot of time to prepare, even if it's short. That doesn't mean it's quick and you can just do it like this. So uh, now that I have the experience in the feature one, I would say it was just like maybe 70% if the feature is 100. So I needed time when you need time to think, to work, to find the locations, to do with, to do preparations with the actors, to, to you know, it's for me. I, so I don't know if I could just go with something very, um, what is happening in time, because I would need one year at least or two. <laughs> I mean. Perhaps we can make a bit the difference between a short film reacting as a journalist piece and uh, a film reacting on, on something that may be related to a political issue or something, but there is a group of, um, of filmmakers in Taiwan uh, grouped by a filmmaker and they are reacting on certain conditions and social uh, circumstances they don't like, they would like to change, so they understood that journalism there doesn't help them to speak out. So yes, they go there and quickly shoot films, and, but they insist on the term film and they make films and then they uh, distribute them through their own network and they make screenings and so on and so on. In this sense they use it, but still they don't understand themselves as journalists or something, but they use the film as something where you can elaborate, where you have time and where you don't need this five or 30 second slot in the news and then that's it or so on. So I think this is, of course we always think, yeah, film, short film, fast. And, and I think, yeah, but the difference is still there that there's an artist relating to something that he, she is trans has been touched and then the other form that is needed for something else. 
Um, maybe we talk a bit about the, the space or the room. Uh, for, for which room do you produce your short films or your films generally? Is it a museum? Is it the audience? Uh, is it the cinema audience? Uh, what audience are you looking for, actually? Are you thinking of this before? I don't know. Maybe not. <laughs> Uh, I, it's mostly cinema, I think, uh, but I have to say that the, this last short film uh, was also screened in a in a in a in an exhibition in a group exhibition uh, as a form of a, of a video installation. So uh, we we projected the film on the back of the original photo of the print of the photo. Uh, we did some some uh, um, modification we put, there, was, there are no credits so it was kind of loop and I have to say it was a really nice experience because it was it, it, it was uh, I didn't I didn't expect to be so it was not I didn't think the film for it it was just the possibility was there to do it uh, and so it's I think it's interesting to, to, to have to imagine also other spaces for it but I think while making the film, or when you start making the film, basically I do it for the for the for the cinema, or probably I don't think about where. I don't know. You? Shopping center, maybe. Shopping center, or... yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Zara>. Subway. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, uh, it's an interesting question. I never thought about it. Uh, I think I always think about the cinema uh, uh, audience because it's the way I think about the sound and uh, all those some little things uh, in some uh, conditions that are very quiet and so you know so you can relate to all those things. If it would be in the gallery museum, I would surely do it another way. I did some uh, things for exhibitions, uh, but they were, uh, I, I had a different approach to it. If it was sound, I would put it a little bit louder. I wouldn't uh, play with those silent parts. The, maybe the would be more color for, I don't know. I, I would think differently about it if it was somewhere else out of the cinema, darkness and the silence of the cinema. Um. This, when I come from the other perspective, no, and then I, I also love exhibitions a lot, and I think that this is it's a great moment that you that you're free, because if I sit in the cinema, then there is this cinema screen. I have to sit down. I have to be silent, you know, and then the bam, bam, bam from the screen, the emotions, the music, everything, and therefore during the last years, I really appreciated more and more the space of an exhibition where you as a viewer can do what you want. And I think that is super interesting. When I talked to this uh, woman film director, Jennifer Reeder, about it, and that I really appreciated her work also in the exhibition space. And I said like, hey lady, I mean, why not even more here, you know? And she's like, yeah, but you know what, Michael? I love to be in the cinema because I finally want people to see certain stories I make up and I want them to see them and sit down and listen to me. I was like, okay, <laughs> you're right. So there are two positions, of course, but I, I understood her point uh, and I thought, yeah, it's interesting that, and that makes it then interesting in the short form again, that of course there are more I think it is still more diversity in the short form if it comes up to the storytelling and people who make the movies, etc., than in the feature length um, format. And I mean, it's not also museum and, and, and cinema, there's a lot of other possibilities you mentioned a lot, but now uh, what we all learned in the last two years is about online streaming a lot. So I think this is a bit more uh, like an, in an yeah, museum or a gallery because you can switch it off and it's up to the viewer actually. What what is your position on online streaming? You do that? I mean, you give your films to whatever festivals or other. Yeah, of course. It's I mean, often we are not uh, the decision maker of where our film goes. So that's the producer and the distributor, <laughs> and. Uh, uh, so, uh, but of course, I, I don't make the film for uh, an, an online streaming platform. But I, of course, I, I also watch films there because I can not watch every film in the cinema. It would be the best condition. 
So uh, I see it more as a second possibility of, of distributing the film, which is okay, but of course it's not, a, it's not an ideal uh, situation for, for, for the experience, I think. So even if you have a big screen, or, but the, the fact what you mentioned, it, uh, the fact you have the control on the time, basically it's, it's a kind of sabotage on the author's uh, uh, idea. So this is not something that influences your work. Um, you're not you're not really thinking about the the place where the film is screened. It, it comes from another I don't know position. The way you work, I mean, or the way you tell your stories, maybe. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Dubrovka. Uh, well, of course, cinema is the first thing we uh, I think about when I do the films, but then. What happened now, especially in the COVID part, uh, the online online streaming was the only way some you can put your film in the world. So of course I would rather do this than nothing. Uh, for me, it's the uh, I'm more happy if the film uh, sees much people that can that they can. So um, okay, first cinema festivals of of course, but yes. Online, I think it's um, it's a necessity now. That's the world where we live, and uh, it's going more and more online. At least in my country. I, I think there are also good sides of this. Uh, I personally, I, I grew up in a village uh, and and lost in the mountains, and there was no cinema uh, uh, closer to uh, 60 kilometers, so I discovered cinema really late. If I would have grown up today, probably I would have access uh, to much more um, cin in artistic cinema, uh, uh, and so, so it's not, it's not it's not only an enemy, the, the online platform. It's also reaching, reaching new, new audiences. It's, it's, it's interesting too. If I can just say, uh, when uh, my second short that was, uh, that premiered in Kanzen, uh, just maybe two months after that, I uh, accidentally uh, found it uh, streaming uh, uh, on uh, some Russian, um, uh, how do you say, site. And uh, I called my producer and she called uh, the YouTube or whatever. And uh, yeah, no, but we were then uh, very afraid that no festivals will take it anymore, you know. So she, she said, I'm going to bring all the attorneys you have to do. It, it was very panic. But then what I saw while it still lasted, it was just one night w while they were taking it off. It had 500,000 viewers and it had uh, about 100,000 comments and I was reading it. What? Yes. In the, one night? No, no. Uh, one night it took us to, uh, to do the everything. No, it was there probably a few months. And then, uh, she, you know, she did everything and then like, okay, we did it, we are good. And then I thought, oh, we are so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so we, you know, I think it will never happen again in my life. Uh, and, you know, so yes, online streaming, uh, you know, 100,000 comments, hello. <laughs> what kind of comments? <laughs> well, there was everything. <laughs> you don't want to know. <laughs> no, nice comments, bad comments, but comments. So people saw it, you know. There is already a question in the audience. Please wait for the microphone. Hello, okay. Um, yeah, talking about dark web and uh, like online platforms, I, I would like to know what you think about uh, NFT, you know, like the unique uh, uh, ADN uh, of digital artworks. Is this something that could be interesting for short films? Bitcoin, you mean? No. It's non fungible token. So, so it's, um, I mean, I was thinking about, uh, about it just because it could be interesting for short films because they are usually only seen uh, on festivals. And this is like, uh, it's, it's like, um, for example, memes, 
they, uh, they, there's like the first meme, like the first uh, like unique piece of meme, which will have this ADN code, and uh, then it's like been sold, and it's getting to the art world, and just this di digital file is like very uh, uh, worthy and whatever. <laughs> I don't know much about that. I think uh, I only saw it in paintings. Uh, is that what you mean about? Yes. I only know the work uh, of like uh, digital uh, artwork. My, even my husband do, does it sometimes because he's a painter. But uh, I didn't even think about it as in the short films. I don't, uh, I, I don't know. I'm sorry. Maybe. I think this is a complete different topic in terms of how to sell or what you want from this work. No, because if it's uh, thought for an, as an art piece, then of course it has a certain addition in this real world, and I guess, but I'm also I'm not super sure now what's going on. If uh, we should ask some specialists about the selling in this special super corner, but of course it might be might be a way of selling it. But I think this way, what you are going to, especially if it comes to short, when you want to make it's a super sound, you know. Um, if you want to continue doing films and feature length films and make a living out of this, then I guess the common version to have a film being commented is an interesting way. Because of course you need certain rumor and the question is if we live ourselves in this kind of bubble of the festivals, how much of this work's been screened out, outside of the bubble? And also how many people outside of this world know about you? Then later, for this later in the so-called cinema world, who will, how will they know? This day is, of course, uh, indecisive uh, that your film is out there. So a certain rumor is necess necessary either through this kind of selling or comments, I guess. <laughs> Thank you <laughs> very much. I'm sorry, I it's not our topic here. <laughs> um, yeah, I want to go back to narration again and wanted to ask you, uh, you both of you, if, if you would say that uh, the way of telling the story differs from short film to feature, because now you started making features, you finished your, the one uh, just now, and Ronnie, I, I would say that your short films are totally different than your feature films, what I've seen. So what's your approach? Um, is, it, is it a different approach? When, I mean, when you start thinking of a feature film than the short films before, or was it just a Le Frenois style? <laughs> no, I, I think it depends on the idea. And, and, uh, could be I have an idea tomorrow, or, and I feel this must be a short film, this works as a short film. And, and so, yes, it, it, it's true that the, my short films are completely also quite different than, uh, than the feature film. But it depends, of course, uh, because on feature you are something, yeah, it's kind of much more in a kind of indust in the indust industry and their expectations because people put money, then the form is much more determinant, e even if you try to be as free as possible. And as, as Mike said, the, 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 the diversity in the short film is much bigger because you have more freedom. So. And there is probably less expectations to get out a, a product you can sell. So um, there is another deal, I think, also with the audience when you say that it's a short film and, uh, and if it's a feature film. And so mm, it depends on your idea uh, uh, where, mm, if what you decide. For example, your film Bella Donna, which is exceptional, you should see it. Oh. Um, <laughs> and it's, and it's, it's really a really nice film and, but I think the strong you could have probably done something like a feature out of it not so about the characters but I think the, the power of the film is this reduction so, and, and, and uh, yeah I think it depends on the idea uh, how does this work for you? Yes, uh, I think about the same because the idea I had for the, sh the, the feature film that I did was a process in, in, in a character. So you need time for that. You want to show 
uh, what happens to her, her, all the environments she was, why she's like that, what happens to her and how she changed, why she changed. You, I couldn't do that possibly in a short. In a short, I was going more for a situation or a, or a feeling, a notion that we were talking to. In a feature, it's not uh, enough. I mean, it's a good starting point, but then you have to do something around it. So, but it, it is the main idea that is, uh, that is the difference between the two formats. And Maike, um, I mentioned the Le Frenois style. <laughs> um, are there any films that you're really surprised? I mean, that you're surprised of that it is something extraordinary special? Or, I mean, you have seen, I guess, a million of films. So maybe you are not uh, that, that easily, uh, I don't know, surprised by films anymore? Or is it um, a special, I don't know, no, visual I'm, style or what? I guess we have different characters here on, on stage. I already figured it out. You said you are sometimes slow and not too much in emotion. I am easy to inflame, <laughs> to put into flames. So uh, I guess I, st I still fall in love. Of course I fall in love. If I see your work, I see your work and I'm touched, you know. So yes, this uh, Le Fresnois, of course, has a very interesting, yeah, I, I think would be very interesting, but it's a different panel, the way you get support there and how you get help for keeping your energy and, you know, not losing it, not losing it in too many debates about your work and what, how will you do it, blah, blah, blah but still keep it because that's what's happening in this certain place. I don't call it school, but you know, yeah. so it's not. It's not no. really a school, no. That four, yeah. So yes, um, I'm easy to put into flames and I was thinking about the last film that put me into flames, but of course in the very moment I forgot. But of course, oh, I mean, you can look at Mr. David O'Reilly. He is still someone that puts me, myself and I and some other people into flames. Um, and when he started from character design, going into the short form, leaving the short form for gaming, going back and always been related to the internet as a form of communication for someone who is living quite a peaceful life for himself, kind of, you know, like very into his spirit and then going out and there is a kind of communication even through, through COVID which I think is very interesting how he uses this and uses it back for going into the installation and artwork. So coming back to your question, I'm easy to inflame. Um, I think it's time now to it open the, the discussion. The put into flames, the born in flames. Born in flames. Born in flames. Uh, so are there any questions in the audience? I will have a look. No, there are no questions online. So please, if you have any questions, um, yeah, there is one here. Just wait for the microphone a minute, a second. Thanks. So when I think about narratives in short film, especially, I think about fiction, narratives and experimental. And I want to ask uh, to you if this category are still valid, because for me, for example, in my personal opinion, short film is a form where actually they blended a lot, these two categories. And so I just want to ask what do you think about these two different categorization, if they're valid and, or personally, what do you think about, sorry. I just understand. You mean it is two different categories, being experimental and being working in fiction? Yeah, for example, like when you uh, s uh, see some like programs of some festivals or you submit the work to festivals, you see for me, for example, the main division between short fiction narratives and experimental film. I know the difference, but for me, you know, it's always difficult to find the border or the limits because short films are a, a way actually to blend these two things. So for me, I, w I was asking myself that maybe this category, is, I'm, I'm just saying my, I don't want to reply to my question and just say my personal point. Uh, I say that there is no way that these categories are so defined but I want to ask to you what you think about these two categories. Is yeah. it clear, the question? Yeah, yeah, super clear. I mean, in the best way, of course, there is no category because, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking of the cinema of Pedro 
Nerves, Nerves Marques from um, Portugal, who is just making his new work for the next Biennale here in Venice. And he's working in fiction but in a very experimental way. What does experiment mean? I mean, this is everything is an experiment, isn't it? I mean, so for, of course, we know where this definition comes from. It has a historical background and it may help the viewer and the audience to decide what kind of ticket they buy, because if not, uh, there is this audience, people are standing there, and of course, uh, I'm in love and I go everywhere, and they say, which kind of ticket should I buy? So it's also a help for outside, no? But in the very best, especially for narration, when it comes together, the experiment of trying to, to yeah, to give a different approach on storytelling, that's super. It goes for all of us, or just for programming? <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> yes, maybe he has some ideas but for Hamburg. <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, yes, uh, I, I wouldn't put some uh, big boundaries uh, in uh, experimental and fictional because it can easily go uh, around, I think. Uh, but it, it's those tools that I was talking about before and how uh, every artist uh, has an pr approach to what he's doing. And uh, I think the, I don't see uh, any problem in uh, seeing experiment, very experimental or very um, um, fictional uh, films in the same slots on the festivals because I, take them uh, the, the same, somehow the same way. What influences me doesn't have anything to do with the form. If uh, that was, uh, yes. I agree. <clears throat> yeah, I think we, you, uh, the border for me is not clear between experimental and, and narrative because you can uh, experiment with narratives too. Or I think we all try, so, so uh, I guess it's more a category to put, I don't know, like to to make some order in a program or not. <laughs> but for, for us, uh, as uh, as as a, uh, an audience or, or as a viewer or a, an author, I don't put, I don't, I don't see a a difference between or a, a clear line between the two. I'm just thinking of a friend of mine. <laughs> Many years ago, we went to the cinema. I said, hey, come and join me on this super movie. I have to show you this super movie. You have to come with me. We just knew each other for you know a short time. I was actually the last time we went together to the cinema <laughs> because he had to see a German experimental filmmaker, Rudiger Neumann, who made structural movies uh, from the beginning of the 80s. And he left. I mean, he stayed. His friends left earlier. He left half an hour later. But it was really. Since then, he doesn't accept any offers. So that's why I think sometimes it may help. But of course, the idea of what is an experiment and experimental movies may scare people and why. And then we come back to the idea of how can I learn what is experimental filmmaking if we know about modern art since when we are in the eighth grade, you know? So we are, perhaps we are, it's not about being afraid of modern art, but you don't like it or whatever, these kind of categories. But still, as we don't know too much, it is sometimes a pity. Okay, are there any other questions or comments maybe from the audience? Please raise your hands. No, no question also on the screen. So um, maybe we go back to the punctum from the beginning. Um, you finished your last feature film now, so do you already have a next project in mind, a next punctum for your next film, uh, short film or feature film? What's, what are your plans? Uh, yes, I do, but um, I, I had it uh, when I uh, wrote my, uh, the script for my first film, and while I was uh, uh, we were trying to raise the money and you know it's a very very long and hard process and while I was waiting for it uh, I started because you just stop and do nothing uh, so I did one short in the meantime just not to do anything and uh, I started a new script 
just to to be uh, good with the time, you know, to move. So when I finish this um, film now, I already have the script who is waiting, which I think is good. But even now I feel a little bit empty. I think I need some time off, you know, brain off. But uh, knowing me, it will be for five days maybe, and then I will start again. But yes, I will then, I will try while I'm funding the second, I will try to do in the pause something third. And I think that's a good way for uh, directors to go because otherwise you would spend seven years maybe on one project, which is in my age, <laughs> not good. <laughs> and Ronnie, what are your plans? My punctums. Uh, yeah. I, yeah, there are several punctums going around in my head. Uh, and, uh, but the, the, the punctum experience is, uh, has been long ago, so I'm working on, on different ideas and scripts. But what do you mean? Then you, you don't have this punctum experience anymore, but you have an idea, or how do, what's the difference? So, it's, There is an idea, but it, an idea is not yet a project. Uh, it's, it's something to pack it in a form, or uh, um, where you can say, okay, this could be... So for me, the punctum, it's the moment where I see, okay, I want to do something about that. Something touched me. It and that's rare? I mean, this moment, this is a very rare <laughs> moment, or you have this moment with every film? At least once. Yeah, I think, I think, yes. But there are some, uh, um, some punctums also, they disappear after a while. So you start, I mean, my, uh, my, my desk, is full of uh, dead projects, so uh, hidden somewhere in my room, uh, where you start, you, you thought that's maybe really something I wanted to, to, to tell something about, and then you discover that rather you don't find the right form for it, or you, you, uh, you, you, you lose uh, the, the interest or uh, the, this, this love you have for the project. So yes, that's, that's, uh, that's why there are several, always several ideas or punctums going on. Maybe we should redefine punctum, I don't know. <laughs> Mike, it's your turn now. Redefine punctum. I think that is, um, that's an interesting one. Perhaps we do this when we have a drink. But um, perhaps uh, what, what I think what is also interesting is uh, what I do at the moment, a lot is really to co-work and uh, co-write, but also co-curate and uh, and therefore, online suddenly becomes such an opportunity to really meet on a weekly base or daily base or whatever. It's not, uh, and, and play it, you know, and, and come up with ideas. And it is so super. So we work on a big uh, program now for about feminism. And so not about redefine feminism or do an, archi you know, an archive of the last 120 years of feminism and, and grab all these films again and make a book out of it, if not really rethink it from a filmmaker's perspective, a woman, uh, two, mo two mothers perspective, and it's got to be about devotion and love and you know, and that is so interesting then suddenly not being alone, but play it. And um, yeah, we're going to see if the money comes around. <laughs> so please, um, yeah. Be playful, that's good, as an advice, I would say. And um, yeah, good luck with finding all your punctums. Thank you for participating today at this panel and thank you for sharing all your thoughts and perspectives with us here today. Thank you for your interest and um, yeah, have a nice day here. Thanks. Thank you.